Tell us a little bit about what V-Notes is, what exactly that means, and, and what that surgery is. So V-Notes is a, it's a complicated term just to say that we're doing laparoscopy through the vagina instead of through the abdominal wall to make it easy. So v stands for Vaginal Natural Orifice Transluminal Endoscopic Surgery. It's an acronym because we operate endoscopically through the lumen of another organ, so not directly through the abdominal wall. Via natural body orifice and for gynecology, it makes sense to choose the vagina as the natural body orifice of choice to operate through. But there's other types of natural orifice surgery. You can operate transorally, you can operate transanally. The colorectal surgeons do TATMEs and Thomas procedures transanally. But for gynecology, it makes sense to do our, our natural orifice surgery transvaginally. So basically what we do in V-notes is we do pretty much all gynecological operations by now without making any abdominal wall incisions. So the entire procedure is performed transvaginally, and we do this endoscopically like we would operate laparoscopically. With the same instruments, we insufflate the abdomen with CO2, but we use all those instruments transvaginally. It makes sense. I think in my own training, I'm a MIGS surgeon, and so I do almost everything laparoscopically. And I trained at an institution where they had strong urogynecology, so we didn't get a ton of vaginal surgery. Vaginal surgery in general is one of those things that I think in our training seems to be, we have a harder time teaching that, I think, than we used to. And while it's great that we're adding robotic and laparoscopic surgery for our patients, it doesn't seem like we're maintaining the level of vaginal surgery volumes to help a lot of us get comfortable. So personally, it's something I don't do very often. But is that something you've always continued to do? Is it something with V-notes that you reintroduced into your practice. Talk, talk about how you got interested in V-notes. I've always done vaginal surgery. I was trained in benign vaginal surgery, and I had training in, in shouter surgery, so the radical hysterectomies for cervical cancer to be done transvaginally as well. So I've always kept doing vaginal surgery, but V-notes has now helped to, to really broaden the indications. And whereas in the past, we probably did 20, 25% of our procedures vaginally, we now do more than 95% of our cases vaginally. I started V-Notes more than 10 years ago, and I think to 2012, but slowly, step by step. My, my old teacher, endoscopic teacher, actually was always in the habit when he did laparoscopic atnexectomies to remove the specimen transvaginally. So he always made a colpotomy. He taught me, you know, at the end of a, a laparoscopic atnexic to make a little colpotomy and take the specimen out, not to have to make your muscle sheet incision wider in the, in the abdomen. And at the time, I was going through a phase where I was doing single side surgery. It was sort of 2011, two, 2012. And there was a bit of a, a hype on single side surgery. I think it's, it sort of died down a bit because it's technically very, very challenging. And, you know, there's not a whole lot of evidence on, on the benefits for it. Um, but at the time, we were doing a lot of single side surgery. It was with, with glove ports still back then. And it sort of made sense when we did a single side history to me. You know, you could take the specimen out vaginally. When we say the single side at next to me, we're taking the specimen out via a colpotomy. And then we sort of started placing that same porch. Let's just have a look trans vaginally when, we, when we've done that, made that colpotomy and see what it looks like when we put the port there and then sort of step by step, we moved forward and, and started doing more and more steps of the procedure gradually. It wasn't like one day of the other, we started performing V-notes cases. Um, and that's sort of how it, how it grew over time. V-notes is not a, a new invention. I think the concept is, has always been there and other groups in the world that have been working on that for a long time as well. I spoke to Lilo Mittler after a conference, and she used to work with Kurt Zim in Europe. He's considered sort of the father of, of laparoscopy. And she said that Kurt Zim, when he was starting laparoscopy, and we're talking 40 years ago now, I think, he already had that idea that we should move from transabdominal laparoscopy. We should move to moving these instruments transvaginally. And they tried it at the time already. So that's now 50 years ago. But the instruments weren't right. You know, the light sources weren't strong enough. Things weren't there. So, so it's not a new invention. It's just, I think, instrumentation got better. Our light sources got better. Our cameras got better. So we, we got to the point where we can do these things that actually the forefathers of laparoscopy already thought of a very long, long time ago. 